Get ready for your daily dose of WordPress and web development tips, tricks, and insights to help you find success with WordPress. You're listening to WP The Podcast with your hosts, David Blackman and Tim Streifler. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of WP The Podcast brought to you by WP Gears. I'm David Blackman. And I'm Tim Strackler. Today we're going to talk about how to fix those most common issues that slow down WordPress websites that we talked about in yesterday's episode. The first reason for a slow WordPress website was bad hosting. What's the solution? Get good hosting, not rocket <laughs> science. There's several that we recommend all the time. WP Engine, SiteGround, Flywheel. There's lots of good WordPress hostings out there. Liquid Web, so on and so forth. Pressable. Uh, they're really, really great hosting for WordPress. Um, in fact, that's owned by Automatic themselves. So uh, definitely know what they're doing on the hosting side of things. So get good hosting. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the second most common reason for a slow WordPress website is unoptimized images. So obviously we're going to tell you to optimize your images. But more specifically, we recommend using a WP Smush by WPMU Dev. That's what I use on all of my websites uh, to compress and optimize the images. Uh, there is a free version that you can try. I use a paid version because uh, there's some additional tools built in, additional features, hooks up to their uh, their servers to do the the compressing a little bit quicker uh, and doesn't put any strain on on, on my hosting. So uh, WP Smush, it'll compress the images. Um, so the first time you install it, it'll go back and do all of your images that are in your media library. And then every new image after that, it will automatically compress it, make it as small as possible without changing the way it looks. So the quality of an appearance isn't going to change. It's all kind of stuff in the back end uh, that, that it does to compress these images. And then, if, for example, if you have a 5,000 pixel wide image, you can set the parameters of you know the largest you want images to be. So for example, you know I don't need an image uh, wider than you know 1080 pixels wide, then you can set that as the max and it'll automatically uh, um, downsize it uh, so that you don't have unnecessarily big images. Um, so I love it. It's set and forget once you get it set up and have the settings dialed in. You never have to think about it. It's uh, ju it just works. It's kind of you know the best way to put it. It just works. So yeah, definitely check out WP Smush uh, from WPMU Dev for optimizing your images. Uh, and then the next most common reason for slow WordPress websites is not using caching. We explained what caching is in the last episode. So we've talked about it a lot on D WP the podcast. So you can uh, go to WPGears.com, search for caching, and you can learn all about it. But uh, basically what, what we recommend to get past that issue is to use a caching plugin. Hummingbird, this is again by WPMU Dev, is a great plugin. Um, if you're using one of the, uh, or a couple of the recommended hosting companies that David mentioned, like WP Engine or Flywheel, they have uh, a layer of uh, caching at the server level. Um, and so that will get you probably like 90% of the way there. And then you can do some additional optimizations. If you're not using one of those, Hummingbird is a great plugin there's a free version as well as a paid version um, and it will create a cache version of all your pages serve those to the users and it will drastically speed up your website and fourth but definitely not least was bad plugins and some of the steps that you're going to want to take obviously is to do some you know pre you know research on before you put the plugins on your website but if you have your, the plugins already on your website and your site's running slow and you think it could be a plugin. Uh, one thing that you can do is just start going through and deactivating plugins one by one to see where the problem lies. If your website speeds up after you've deactivated a plugin, odds are that's the culprit. Speak with the developer, find out if there are any issues, any known issues, do some Google searches and stuff and just try to replicate, you know, try to fix the issue. If it's not fixable and you can't find anything, highly recommend removing the plugin. There's no nothing worse for a customer than a slow website. They're going to leave your website. So um, if they can't see your products and services in a timely manner, I don't care how much you want to use that plugin, you know, or what it's doing, what functionality it's performing. If it's slowing down your website, you're losing money. So 
deactivate yeah. one by one, find the culprit, reach out to the developers, you know, and then try to see if you can get a fix for it and stuff. And if not, remove it, get it off of your website. It's just not worth it. Tim, yeah. Anything else? Absolutely. Yeah. One thing I would recommend is uh, throughout this process um, of testing and, and, you know, upgrading your hosting, optimizing images, using caching, deactivating bad plugins is test the speed. Obviously, you're testing it in your own browser, but use a speed testing tool so you have something more concrete. And so, uh, uh, Pingdom, the, their uh, page speed test is awesome. Also, GT Metrics, and both of those are going to show you a waterfall of what's taking a long time. So right away, you'll be able to see, oh, uh, I have really, really large images that are taking a long time to load. Or you can sometimes see uh, resources that a plugin is is loading in that's causing issues. Uh, for me, for example. Um, when I first launched Divi Life, I had a I was using a a, a font from uh, Adobe's uh, Type Kit, and it was a really cool font, looked great. And then I realized that their um, Type Kit servers were a little bit slow, and so loading in that external uh, font was slowing down my website, and it wasn't really worth it. And so I just chose a different font and got rid of the custom font. Uh, use a font that was built in into Divi, uh, which is uses Google fonts, which is cached on everyone's computers. Um, and that uh, that sped up my website just by getting rid of that. So the testing tools can really help you identify the weak points in your website in terms of page speed. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it'll really help um, overall throughout this process that we've been talking about uh, in today's episode and yesterday's episode. All right. Well, tomorrow we've got another great episode. Tim? Until tomorrow, we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. We've come to the end of today's episode of WP the Podcast. Join us tomorrow for more daily tips and strategies designed to help you run your WordPress business towards success. Remember to subscribe to WP the Podcast so you can stay up to date with each episode. And don't forget to rate and review us. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on WP the Podcast.